Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're talking about the plant hack of using mayo on leaves. And if there's any science to back that up. So this was actually brought to my attention uh, by Jeff at Everything Plants. We were laughing about a post that I had made on Instagram about using Perrier to water plants with and why it actually works and how the University of Colorado did a whole study on it and the study checked out. Mind blown. But besides the fact he then mentioned Perrier and Mayo, that's how you take care of your plants and that is because mayo apparently in the plant community is used as leaf shine so let's jump into what the heck is going on with that so when you use mayo on the leaves you are literally supposed to use the mayo put it on a paper towel and then wipe the leaves down with it and it's going to remove the dust and it's going to leave behind a very shiny finish which it would however there when googling the googling is hilarious when you do this there's a ton of forums talking about how they did it and now their leaves are even dustier than what they were before and this makes sense because the mayo is an oil a fat um it also has vinegar in it so it's probably not great to put on your plant leaves but besides the point it leaves a residue that attracts pests and dust to stick to it so while it may make your plant look good temporarily, it's going to make your work that much more in the future. It's going to reduce your photosynthesis and ultimately you're gonna have to wash the plant off again regardless. So just mayo hack, no, it's, it's fake, it's debunked. But let's look at other foliar sprays and whether or not just leaf shine in general is worth your purchase. So Leaf Shine has some claims and I'm gonna read them off here. They remove dust, dirt, and lime deposits. It helps the leaf breathe better. It reduces evaporation and prevents dust from reoccurring and it leaves the foliage glossy and bright. So that's a lot to digest. Let's break it down just a little bit. So of course it's going to remove dirt because you're physically putting a liquid on and then wiping it off. So that is given. It's going to remove dust, dirt, and lime. That is gonna happen with water. So that doesn't really, you know, ring any bells for me. However, the ability to make the leaf breathe better and reduce evaporation is a bit odd. So when a leaf breathes, I'm assuming they're talking about respiration, that happens on the underside of the leaf with the stomata. So we have the stomata, which is an organ, and then um, think of the stomata as like our throat. So we have our throat, which is an open hole, and then we have our lips on the outside. Those are our guard cells. So our guard cells open and close, some more than others. Mine, for example, open more. I like to talk a lot. But when your guard cell opens, it allows for water to both move in and out. It also allows for gas exchange to move in and out, depending on ambient humidity, what environment it's in, what kind of plant it is, all that stuff. So leaf shine, if applied properly, we can into that a little bit later, should never really affect your respiration of your plant because a majority of your stomata is on the bottom of your leaf. There are some stomata on the top, but a vast majority of it is on the bottom. So. That is a little bit odd. The ability for it to uh, reduce evaporation from the plant also is odd because if anything, the dust was actually cooling and protecting the plant to a point. So the fact that they, it just is the opposite of what it's doing. So that one's a little bit weird too. Um, preventing dust from reoccurring. This may be, and I don't know what's in this stuff i literally tried googling i even physically got the label for one and there's no ingredients anywhere on this thing so i don't actually know what's in leaf shine i have no idea it's impossible to say um so with that being said when you um, use it on a plant and I've never used it before but if you use it and you're noticing that the leaf is glossy 
but when your hand goes across it, it kind of slides a little bit better. That makes me think that they have like a, a plastic or a paraben in it to help seal up the top portion of the leaf and make it very even. And so just giving it a little bit extra hydrophobicity, like a little bit of an extra cell wall, a bit of a cuticle on the outside of the leaf, which would prevent dust buildup um, and that sort of thing. It also prevent water buildup, which I mean, could be a bad thing or a good thing, depending on who you talk to. If the leaf shine is pr applied properly, it should not be applied to ferns, fuzzy plants like African violets or monocots. So monocots or any plant that's a grass. Dracaena would be one. Sensevieria. What else? So monocot versus a dicot. A dicot has actual stems and leaves um, and a monocot is more bushy look. It looks like grass is essentially what it comes down to. There's no real way to explain that in a very scientific way, I apologize. But any sort of monocot, you should not be spraying. And that is because there is no underside and there is no top to leaf. It is the stomata and guard cells are equally placed along the entire blade um, of that plant. And so those you should avoid altogether. But they do say when you do apply it to only apply it to the top of your plant leaves. And this is very important. Even if you're not using a leaf shine, even if you're using mayo, even if you're using water, water and soap, water and vinegar, whatever you choose to do, do not, I cannot express, do not touch the bottom of your leaves. They are very fragile. They're not meant to be fiddle footsed around with. So you have your plant here and you have, um, and I don't use leaf shine and my leaves are shiny, so I don't know water for the wind but you have your plant here you can see the top is shiny if you flip over even this wilbur you'll notice it's much more matted and muted and that is because the actual cuticle on a leaf is drastically different when we're talking about the bottom of the leaf because there's more activity happening in this area on a cellular level this is where respiration takes place there's some respiration that takes place up top but a majority is on the bottom of the leaf. So when you handle any plant, even monsteras, I know we like to touch their leaves and grab them. Um, avoid touching the bottoms of the leaf. It can stunt both the growth of the leaf, the plant's ability to uh, respire, all that sort of stuff. So you want to avoid that whenever possible. The only time I would ever say spray the bottom of a leaf with something is if you have a pest issue and you've run out of biological control options and your only option is pesticide then you will have to treat the bottom of the leaves for the sole purpose of saving the plant that is fine but if we're talking everyday regular avoid it when possible because it will affect your plant in a negative way well, i have heard lots of comments or YouTube videos, blog posts, saying that it leaves a residue or it has residue in it that um, clogs the pores of the plant. And I'm, when they say pores, I'm assuming they're talking about the stomata because those are the only real entry to the outdoors that plants really have. And I, I don't know if that, if it does. I can't speak to whether or not it does clog pores. The jury's still out for me because I don't know what's in the stuff. No idea. I cannot figure it out to save my life. There's nothing on the label. So I can't say whether or not it does clog pores. However, because I don't know what's in it, I'm also not going to recommend it to you either. And honestly, the best solution when you wipe down or clean off any sort of leaf is water water and that is it you can do water and dish soap however i do encourage you to watch my video i did on using dish soap and how using dish soap is actually not a great idea with plants because it can cause more infection issues and make the plant more susceptible 
to uh, plant invasions. So go check that out to make a decision as to whether or not you want to use Dawn, but you can use water. Um, you can use hydrogen peroxide diluted with water, all that sort of stuff. I'm going to do a video on hydrogen peroxide um, and the difference between food grade and medical grade and using it on plants because that was something that one of you guys did recommend. So I am putting that together as well. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Let me know in the comments down below what you want to see for the next video. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.